I'm David Frankel. I'd like to talk to you today about the carving of a spirit board. This will take us to the Gulf province of Papua New Guinea. In many parts of the area, low-lying and swampy, accessible only by canoe, covered with nipa palm and mangroves. We will visit Kinameri village in the centre, Uburama Island. In the Purari Delta. Here we will find Morovi Uai carving a Gobi board or spirit board. Such boards were important in traditional Papuan society in the Gulf and are still the best known of the crafts of the area. They, in traditional terms, provided a link between individuals and clans and their ancestors. Some of them, not the ones like the one we will look at made for sale, but some of them in traditional times were potent and powerful, embodying animal spirits. These needed to be kept hidden, for they were dangerous. So they were retained out of sight and brought out only at times of ceremony. In our case, the Gopi board was made, Amorovi, from the side of an old disused canoe. For canoes are common, essential items for life in the area. An elongated oval was cut out of the wood, which was then stained dark of soot and smoke of a fire. The first stage of the carving saw the cutting away of the surface into the cleaner wood below, creating the shape of the face, the eyes, cheeks and mouth. This was then developed and finer lines cut around those early outlines and the face can be seen as proudly displayed in this picture. The next stage saw an initial laying out of the surface with fine lines incised into the surface. These created a framework for the further carving, the symmetrical carving, left and right symmetry, characteristic of these boards. Infilling around this framework was more freehand but still a great deal of symmetry and uniformity, the work of an expert craftsman. And it, it is always good to look at how craftsmen, specialists in their trade were able to work. In this case, using very simple tools, a fine chisel recycled from a modern screwdriver, here being used to cut away additional wood from the surface to leave behind raised fine black lines now outlining the structure. In traditional times, before metals were available, probably large, hard and sharp shells were used, but perhaps stone was also occasionally employed. The next stage of preparing the board was to paint it. Here, Part of the design is being filled in with a white paint made from lime obtained from shells. Then finally, red paint was applied to other parts of the design, leaving an overall design with some areas black, the fine thin lines also left behind in their black, and then the stark white and red to create this colorful pattern. The, the Gopi board was carved in the men's longhouse in 1981 while we were staying there. We were there to do our archaeological research and incidentally were able to observe people at work and other activities. That men's longhouse was new, built particularly because people knew we were coming. For many years before that there'd been no traditional men's longhouse in the village. I'm not sure when the older 
longhouses were destroyed, but we know something of what they looked like in 1921. At that time, the Australian photographer Frank Hurley visited Gulf Province. He had his aeroplane, he had his boats, he had his cameras, and he took amazing photographs, for he was a great photographer, of Kinamere village and other places in the Gulf. Here we see the men's house in 1921, with men of the village standing in front of it. Hurley's photographs of the interior show an amazing sight. The men here sitting in the centre, the sides with little compartments or cubicles divided off from one another by various racks decorated with skulls, or with other ritual paraphernalia, including arrays of gopi boards, and in the photograph on the right, a set of pig skulls. This is the centre of men's lives, of various activities, including preparing material for the rituals and ceremonies that were such an important part of their lives. At some stage, this longhouse, all that ritual paraphernalia, disappeared, perhaps destroyed by accident, but also it may be that it was destroyed because of activities of others. Christian missionaries undermined aspects, most aspects indeed, of people's traditional lives, rituals and ceremonies. But then there were other particular events, starting in 1919, but going through all the 1920s. So uh, some hundred years ago, there was a millennial cult, a cargo cult in Gulf province. This cult was known to the colonial administration and described by the government anthropologists, Effie Williams as the Vailala Madness. And one of the main teachings, as Effie Williams wrote later, was that the old customs and ceremonies must be done away with. The bull roarers and the masks worn in the ceremonies were cast out of the men's houses and burnt while women and uninitiated men looked on. And it's possible that this was an event or a related event which led to the destruction of the original earlier Kinoberry Longhouse. But there is another aspect that Williams describes among the many different facets of this complex event. It was foretold and everywhere believed that the spirits of the dead would return. In some quarters they were expected to appear as white men and indeed some Europeans were actually welcomed as the ghost of Papua. And that brings us back to Kinnamary village. We were there in 1981 as archaeologists, excavating in the centre of the village outside of the new longhouse. We were looking for evidence of past activities, actions and behaviour within the village, and especially links to other sites as part of trade networks. So here in this photograph, my younger self, shiny, white, translucent almost, overlooking the excavations in progress, while some of the villagers look on. Now, our activities are rather strange. People knew what we were doing, but it didn't really make sense to them. And in fact, archaeology is a rather strange thing to be doing. They had a slightly different understanding Somewhat hesitantly, they told us about it. Hesitantly because, as they said, we're all Christians, so we don't really believe this. But, but we know that you're not really doing what you say. You are the ghosts of some of our ancestors returning to the village. And looking at these pictures, it's possible to see 
my former self in that circumstance through the eyes of the Papuan men. Your ghosts, they said, you've returned to this village and you're digging that hole to find something that you'd lost in a past life. That sounds a very strange explanation, but I leave you with a question. That is, how do I know that it was not true?